And we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna Come on us We welcome you here Lord Jesus We also welcome those of you who are viewing with us online this morning. We pray that as you minister and, and worship with us, that your hearts will be touched and open to receive what Pastor Steve has to say for us later on. We also welcome Pastor Benny and Thelma who are on vacation. We know that it's really hard for you to be in Florida and on a cruise at this time. So just know that the parking lot did get plowed. We got more snow. But we want you to enjoy yourself and relax and have a wonderful vacation so that you can come home refreshed in uh, your spirits and in your bodies that you have this time together. So God bless you, Pastor Benny and Thelma, as you have your vacation. You may be seated. So last year, at about this time, and at Christmas, a friend of mine gave me this book. It's called The Then Sings My Soul. It's 150 different stories of the world's greatest hymns. And I know sometimes we think that hymns are a thing of the past, but they are not. They are the solid parts of which are foundations for our own faith. And the new music that we sing is so uplifting and glorifying to God. And so as we partner together with, with also the hymns and the choruses that we sing. So this one that I was reading about this week is called Blessed Assurance. And I'm sure that as I say that most of you know what that means. But in 1873, Fanny Crosby and her friend Phoebe Knapp wrote this song. So if you know anything about Fanny Crosby, you'll know that she was blind from the time she was a very small baby. She had some kind of an infection, they say, and the doctor recommended that they put mustard plaster on her eyes, and it burned her eyes, and she became blind for the rest of her life. Very sad story, but God was in it even at that time. Um, she was passionate about a lot of things in her life, and she ended up spending many, many years uh, working in New York City as a missionary to the urban people in the poorest slums of the city. She never felt that her blindness was a hindrance. Instead, it, it, she attributes it to her keen memory. And so I'm just going to read you a little excerpt. One of Fanny's dearest friends, Phoebe Knapp, while Fanny lived in the Manhattan slums and worked in the missions, Phoebe lived in Knapp Mansion, a palatial residence in Brooklyn, where the, she entertained lavishly and had very extravagant things in her home, but Fanny was always a frequent house guest. One day in 1873, while Fanny was staying at the Knapp Mansion, Phoebe said that she had a tune she wanted to play for her. And so she did. And as she was playing the song, Fanny clapped her hands immediately and said, Why, that says, blessed assurance. She quickly sat down and composed the words, and a great hymn was born. So let's sing together, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. 
Hero of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long Perfect submission, perfect delight Visions of rapture now burst at my sight Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love this is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long Perfect submission, all is at rest I in my Savior am happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above Filled with this goodness, lost in His love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long One of the uh, quotes that I also read in that book was that she said that the very first thing that she sees is going to be the face of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful that she can see that? So let's stand together as we continue worshiping and praising God. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful Where streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out and turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I would say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me on the road. Oh. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. On the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I would say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say. Blessed be your name, you give and take away, you give and take away, but I can choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the glorious name. The heavens will welcome me. I was but he brought me in, oh, his love for me. Oh, His love for me. The sun sets free. Oh, He's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. The Son said, With free indeed, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. house that's a place for me I'm a child of God yes I am sin not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I'm chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am who you say I am You son Child of God, yes I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God, say with me how great is our God, and all will say how great, how great is our God. Age to age we stand. 
time is in its sense beginning and the end beginning and the end the god had three in one father spirit son the lion and the lamb the lion and the lamb how great is our god sing with me how great and always say how great how great is our god name above all names worthy of all praise and my heart will sing how great our God, His name above all names, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing. Um, first of all, we have a uh, seniors luncheon coming up in February and it's going to be a fun activity um, and the topic is caring for those that we love and Marilyn um, Burmaster is going to our pastor Marilyn is going to be in charge of that um, service and I know that you're going to have lots of fun there are still some things on the bulletin board that need to be signed up for food items and people to help in the kitchen or to set up so if you could see that out on the foyer as well that would be very uh, helpful um, you'll see that we have a bulletin insert this morning and one of the goals of our church is to help those around us and to help those that uh, to uh, fill in the gaps where they may not have things and people in that and so this morning um, we're asking that you will assist us to help a family who has just moved here and has been coming to our church and they are going to be getting their apartment on the 1st of February. So on Saturday the 4th, we're going to be helping them to move in to their apartment. So we need some good, strong helpers to come, men or women, it doesn't really matter. You can help carry a bag or a grocery bag or something like that um, as well. So we're going to be meeting here at the church around 10 o'clock in the morning and then going to their apartment with the things that we've gathered here. There's also a, a list of many items that they still need that maybe you have something sitting at home that you've been thinking, boy, I wish I had a place to put that. We had a lady yesterday call and said, I've had a whole thing of Legos just waiting for somebody. So she's donating the Legos. Anyway, so if you can help us with any of these items, would you see me after the service? Or you can drop into the office or call the office this week. And um, if you are unable to help bring that yourself, maybe we can make arrangements for you to have it picked up at your home as well. So I know that as we minister to those around us who are coming from other lands to our church, how exciting it is that they're worshiping with us. And so we just want to help them out. At this time, one of our board members, uh, Debbie Ramsey, is going to come and read the scripture and pray for the needs of our church. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm going to say a little prayer first before I read. Um, Dear God, we are so incredibly in need of your power and your strength. We ask that you would fill us with your spirit of love and unity among believers all around our world. We ask for your help to set aside our differences and to look greater to the greater cause, the cause of Christ. So this, the scripture I'm going to read is Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. 
You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. Father God, I pray for Pastor Benny as he's away with Thalma on a much needed and well-deserved vacation. I pray for the leaders of our city, Father God, that they would come forward and unite the churches and the, the needs that we, we need in our city. Father God, um, we pray for Marlene Smallpiece's cousin, Betty Lou, Julie Reed, Randy Reed's daughter-in-law, um, Betty Woolley, Diane Fournier, U the Ukraine, and we pray for the Sventassen family. Sven's sister-in-law passed away last night. We pray for his brother and his family. Father God, be with this church congregation as we go forward out into the world and the city that we would uh, pray a, a blanket of prayers over everybody that needs it. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. At this time, Pastor Steve is going to come and bring the word of God to our hearts. And I know that uh, things that he has to say will be coming from the Lord. And so we just uh, pray for you, Pastor Steve, as you minister this morning. Thanks, Bobby. Praise the Lord. I hope you don't mind that I'll be standing here this morning. I want to be able to look into your eyes. <laughs> um, it's indeed a privilege to be able to bring the Word of God and to always be here to share with you what I believe that God places upon my heart at every particular point in time. And so, um, let us pray. Father, we thank you because we know that we are gathered unto you and not unto any man. Your word makes us to understand that wheresoever two or three are gathered, there you are with us. And so God, because we know you are here, we pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to us. Your Holy Spirit will touch each and every one. And Father, by the end of today, we would have received your touch. We would receive a unique anointing upon our lives. We will receive that which only you can give in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good, good. So, um, two weeks ago, Pastor Ed preached um, and he talked about, I think his topic was, let's talk about worship. And uh, he did say a lot of things. I, during the message, I sent a text to Pastor Ben. I was like, Pastor Ed is preaching my message already. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, oops. But you know, the beautiful thing is when you know you receive something from God and somebody else received something from God and is preaching the same thing, you know, oh yeah. I'm still hearing God, and that's always a cool thing, you know. Um, so that encouraged me. And then last week, Pastor Ben preached about how to get the millennials in, which happens to do with um, how we reach the other generations that are not here. And so today, uh, because Pastor Ed already preached my message, <laughs> I'm just going to preach the part that he, he didn't preach that day, okay? So today, um, in thinking about how, you know, it's a new year, and of course, it's a theme 
where we start making New Year resolutions, we start thinking about what do we want to achieve this year? What is the bigger goal? And for some of us, it would be something financial. For some of us, it would be marriage. Me. For some of, <laughs> for some of us, it would be, um, you know, whatever the bigger goal is, starting a family, having, um, going on more vacations, making sure that we love our wives more or treat our husbands uh, better, and whatever it is. But, you know, thinking about it, I'm just like, what do I want? What's the best, what's the most that I want for my life this year? Apart from the one I already mentioned. And I just thought, I want to be that, I want to be that guy that God can always look at and say, I know Steve is there. He's got my back. You know, when you're, look, when you're trying to get into a relationship, for example, there are particular qualities that you look, look out for. So in my own case, I'm trying to get married. And uh, one of the first things is I'm looking for a woman that was born a woman. <laughs> yeah, need to clarify that. <laughs> And then two, um, someone who has the capacity to love and share and make me feel alive. That's something that we all look out for, especially when we're starting, you know, this exciting journey about marriage or relationship, whatever. And then the third thing is someone who would help you build a future, the future that you desire. Now, for all of us, we all have a particular future that we desire, we all have you know, that bigger dream. So while you are with someone that you love, you know, somebody who you know loves you and cares about you, you also want to be sure that this person can entirely support the future or the big dream that you have. Somebody, the Bible says that can two work together except they agree, you know, so there has to be some level of, of agreement. There has to be some level of, you know, us working on something together and unfortunately that's what happens in many relationships where people love themselves they care about each other but they're not working on anything together and so it seems like they get bored and they think the next thing they need to do is get out of the relationship is because there was never something you know that bigger dream that they they should be building together and so it gets boring and they think the next thing to do is get out am i making sense this morning right good so these are three things and so when i think about it in the terms of god if i want to be that guy that god would always know that i am there as his son the bible says in romans eight fourteen that for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god there are three categories of people that god is looking for and I want us to take a look at it this morning, at, at these three categories, and be sure exactly where we are. Because while God is looking for everybody, generally, there are some people that he prefers the most. He loves everybody, but just the same way you would have kids. Okay, I know that's tricky, but you'd have kids. There are some that you know, oh yeah, that's my baby. My baby boy, my baby girl, fine. But when it comes to the level of, um, say, responsibility, I need someone to drive my car, go drive my Lamborghini, go get gas. You know the one that you're going to pick. It's not everyone. You're going to pick that one. The one you're, you're thinking about is the one I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So, three categories. One is the sinner. The Bible makes us to know that in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that for whoever, did I quote that wrong already? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God loves the sinners. He's looking for the sinners. The Bible makes us to understand in um, in Romans 5, 8, that God showed his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There was that part where God loved the sinner, so he tried to make a certain move to make sure that he found the sinner out. Of course, there's the parable of the lost sheep where 
uh, the, the farmer or the shepherd left the 99 in the fold and then goes out to look for the lost sheep. God is continually looking for the sinner. And so if you are here today, today, and for some reason you haven't given your life to Christ, you are one of the people that God is looking for. And he will not stop until he finds you. He knows where you live. He knows where you are. He knows all the intricate things about you because he created you. He says, before, while, you were, while you were in your mother, mother's womb, I formed you. And then in Isaiah 43, he said, I formed you. I have called you. You are mine. And so he's continually looking for the sinner. Praise God. Number two, the second person that God is looking for is the worshiper. And that's what um, Pastor Ed talked about a lot. You, wait, is there anybody here who goes back online to watch the messages again? I know I do. Honestly, you should do that. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You should, you should, you know, go online, watch it again, or if you need somebody to download it for you, make sure you do, because that's how we grow. Now, so the worshiper, John 4, 23, said, yet the time is coming and now has come where the true worshiper must worship God in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh those who will worship him. And I know here I have, I have talked a, a little bit about Abraham where you know God gave him this promise his son and then at some point God said you know what take your son your only son Isaac so that he's not confused about who he's talking about and offer him as a bond offering but we know the story and so at the point where he was ready to give everything that was uh, like an indication of his future his his love, his preference, his everything, at the point where he was ready to offer it up, God was like, now I know that you love me. Now, this is a guy who has walked his entire life, or almost his entire life with God, and God was still re requesting something from him, and then after that one act, God, was, God goes on ahead to say, now I know. So the question is, what has he been doing all his life. It means that regardless of where we are, there is that question that God will always keep asking all of us Christians. Do you still love me? Am I still number one in your heart? Is there anything that I've given you that has replaced me? Are you worshiping the things that I've given you or are we together on this journey? So God is looking for the worshiper who who essentially is the person in the position of a lover, somebody who spends time, somebody who, who knows what God wants and does it. However, it doesn't stop there. There's a third category of people that God is looking for. And unfortunately, he's looking for this category of people every single time because there are not so many in this category. Can you guys hear me? Was it good before? Or is it? Okay. Hello. Okay. So, the third one is the intercessor. Unfortunately, when we we're born again, we become saved. It gets to a point where we become lovers. We know and do everything God wants us to do. But, you know, just like the, the way I use the example of the position of responsibility, when you have that child that you know he's going to handle business, he's going to do everything that I need him to do when I'm not there, that is where the intercessor comes in. Because the Bible makes us to understand that the heavens belong to God, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. And so whenever God needs to do something on earth, he needs the partnership with other human beings. 
because he will not violate his own principles just because he is God of all. And so because he has given the earth to the sons of men, what he needs is human beings who will partner to say, God, we allow you in this territory. God, we allow you in this family. God, we allow you to come and take preeminence, you know, to let your kingdom come. The Bible helps us to understand in Matthew 6 that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, God will not just do his will on earth until he has human beings who will partner with him. Are we together? And so when, when God looks for the intercessor in Ezekiel 22, 30, said, and I sought for a man amongst them who would stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So we have a lot of people who are saved and born again, who, you know, God has found them. They are now in the fold. We have a lot of people who are not stepping out of the fold because, you know, they're the love of God. They worship God. They do the things that God wants them to do. But there is that other category of people that helps God expand his kingdom. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the next category, the category of people that pleases God utmostly are the ones who not just stay with God, but helps God work. And because God has given this earth to the, to the sons of men, he's not looking for those who will just come in the kingdom and just sit down and you know, marry. The Bible makes us understand that the kingdom of heaven is not of meat and drink, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Are we together? And so when God helps us to see that it is not just for us to come in and enjoy, it is also for us to come and do the Father's business. When Jesus was going, he said, Occupy till I come. What is that occupation? expanding the kingdom of God. The reason he's given us authority over snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy is in order for us to be able to expand his kingdom. So when you speak to the next person that you're talking to, are you just whiling away time or are you on the father's business? When you look at your family, when you look at your kids and you see things going you know, wrong, what are you doing? Are you expanding the kingdom by praying the will of the father on over that child or over that territory or are you just hoping that something will change when god has given you authority people there is nothing else that pleases the father more than to be able to work with him amen and so when we go through all of this, we'd see that, yes, you know, the Bible makes us to understand that the rain falls over the wicked and on the righteous. There are general blessings that we will get. But when you work with the Father, the thing that he does is he preserves you whether you like it or not. Because it's the same thing that happens in every family. The child that is most responsible, you love all your kids, you know. Don't look to the right or to the left because... <laughs> Usually, most parents say they don't have favorites. Well, okay, you don't have favorites, but there's that one child that you know you can trust to do what you need him to do even if you didn't tell him. And that's also the way God looks at us. He loves us. He'll still bless you regardless. He'll give you that house, that, you know, wife, children, everything. But there's that one that God is going to keep looking at because he knows that I have to keep him safe. I have to keep his health. I have to make sure that everything works out for him so that he can focus on the business that I have on earth through him. Does that make sense? And so every single time when we, when we read through um, the book of John, we're going to see a lot of things that talk along this line. And so when we look at our lives are we just marking time? Are we just doing the basic routine? Wake up, go to work, talk to our friends, sit down for coffee, and then go back home. And I would do it again the next day. Or are we spending time expanding the kingdom of God? Now, of course, we might, a lot of times we might have, you know, different excuses to say, oh, well, maybe, um, 
I don't have too many people around me, that's fine. Um, or um, I'm at a certain age, I can't go out that much, that's fine. But you know what? The Bible makes us to understand that those who will go on their knees and pray, they change things. They still expand the kingdom. And if we don't spend time, I think the easiest thing that any one of us in this room can do is spend time praying. And this by itself guarantees that the Holy Spirit himself will help us to pray. He will help us to be able to pray the mind of the Father. I remember at some point where I would just say, okay, God, I just want to, Holy Spirit, help me pray about maybe Sault Ste. Marie, about the church and all. Initially, it used to be like maybe 10 minutes, you're done. 15 minutes, you're done. But as you keep doing that, and you keep committing that time to the Holy Spirit, you realize that you pray an hour, two hours, three hours, and it doesn't, it doesn't feel like you've done anything. Why? Because it gets to a point where the Holy Spirit is the one praying through you because essentially God is looking for those who will pray. And so if you don't start, there's nothing to help. Usually I tell my students uh, when I'm teaching at the college to say, well, you know what? At this point, at the beginning of the semester, you, have, you all have A+, plus, okay, A star. But how much of it you keep at the end of the semester depends on the work you put in. And so I'm like, even if I wanted to give you all the grades, you still have to do something. You know, if, if um, I said, oh, at the end of the semester, I'm gonna multiply whatever you get by one billion points. If your point is zero, you still get nothing. And so we have to come to that point. You know, I don't multiply that points by one billion, okay? <laughs> but you have to come to a point where you have to start somehow. And this is not just when we come to church to gather together about a prayer meeting. It is what you do in the corners of your rooms, in those midnight hours. Unfortunately, a lot of us, we, a lot of times as Christians, because, you know, we enjoy God's grace and mercy. We just take it for granted and forget about the fact that there are other people out there who still need God's kingdom to be established in them and through them. And so in many cases, we forget. But of course, when we intercede, which is one of the things that I really want to do this year. I want to be that guy who, who God will be able to say, I trust him. You know, there was a point God was talking about Abraham. Abraham did not even have children yet. He said, for I know him. I know he will command his children after the way of the Lord. This is a person who hasn't done anything. And what, did, what happened to Abraham? Now all of us because of the kind of relationship and the expansion of God's kingdom, of God's agenda that he helped with, now we're all blessed, you know, by God through Abraham. What did Enoch do? The Bible says that Enoch walked with God, and he, but before he, um, he walked with God and God took, he was no more, for God took him up to heaven. And the Bible says that, for, but he had this testimony that he walked with God. You know, that was what the Bible says in Hebrews. What happened with David? David was not particularly a, a, a perfect guy, but with everything that he did, God said, you know what? Your throne cannot just be on earth anymore. I have to put your throne in heaven so that Jesus becomes the seed who sits on your throne forever. These are ordinary human beings. What did Elijah do? Elijah prayed and changed the course of a whole nation. The Bible makes us to understand that he was just like the rest of us. Normal human beings doing extraordinary things. I want to be that kind of person that at some point God would trust me enough to, you know, grant me, you know, the capacity to help people, to even heal people. So that people don't just keep, you know, having all these ailments. We can grow old and still be healthy and then have our time and be like, you know what? It's my time. Uh, goodbye, guys. We'll see in heaven. 
I will have that. I want to be able to do it. You know, if the power of God is real, you have to get to a point where God can trust you with it, but he's not going to spread it on the, on the ground just for you to pick up. He has to be able to see that you have his agenda at heart. And when he, so when he sees that you have his agenda, that is the point that he comes down to you. That's the point that he can trust you with a lot more anointing, a lot more capacity. Whether it's money that will help you increase that agenda or whatever the capacity is, he will give it to you because he's the one that will ensure that you produce and bear fruit that last. That is who God is looking for. So depending on what category you're on or you're in, the sinner, God is looking for you. And it's to your own advantage that you give your life to him. You're already in the kingdom. You're doing the things that the father loves. Keep doing it. Because that way he sees that you are his son. But on the higher level, pray. Expand his kingdom. Spread the gospel. If, if you can't do much, you have some resources to commit to the gospel. Let everything that you are, Everything that you will ever dream or become, dream to become, be expanding the agenda of God. And from that level, God can look to the earth and say, I know Steve is there. I trust him because everything that I need to do right there, he's going to do for me. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we look to you. Help us. Help us to be more kingdom-minded this year. Help us to live in such a way that you can trust us with more. Help us to know that at this point in time, you're looking for men who will stand in the gap. That you will not destroy our city, that you will not destroy our homes, that you will not destroy our children or even our country. Help us to be in a place and a condition of heart where you can commit more to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Let's uh, stand this morning and we're going to sing our final song for us. Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all. The at his feet I bow Worldly pleasures all forsaken Take me, Jesus, take me now Savior, I surrender all.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for these wonderful words that we have heard this morning. The challenge to our hearts, Lord, to be your children, to be workers and to be witnesses everywhere we go, Lord. We just, as this hymn says, Lord, I give myself to you. We pray, Lord, that as we go our ways this week, that you will bring us opportunities to share the good news of the gospel, to participate in helping those around us. And we thank you for Pastor Steve this morning and his words that he's heard from you and that he has spoken to us, that we may be challenged as we walk this path together as a family of God in this church. Mm -hmm. We'll be careful to praise you, Lord. Bless us as we leave this place. Keep us safe and bless those who are grieving, those who have sickness and sadness, Lord, in their lives. We pray that they will hear the words of these songs and of this scripture, Lord, that their hearts will be drawn to you, that you were, they will be your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for that. Amen. You may be dismissed. Amen.